All right, so hard, hardware wise, I'm actually finally getting the base, the new base stations that Apple's uh, released. I, I, I like the anyway. I, you know, I'm not, I'm on the end standard, but I'll go to the A6200 <coughs> for that. And the Mac Pro, which I'm sure everybody was was one uh, was. Uh, Considering Mac you've been like waiting for it. <laughs> I was like, what is Bit? What is Bit? Is he going to be an Apple fanboy or is he going to be Mr. Bit? <laughs> it's like. When I first knew it was nostalgia all over, I was like, Cube Reborn. I was, I, I, I'll admit, I mean, I was just giggling with joy and it was bringing back great memories of the old days. When they took the cover off, I was like, this is, you know, I was in a, in a euphoric, their euphoric state. Um, I just was, you know, living the old days and seeing it come back uh, to the present. And um, and then when you calmed down and came back yeah. to reality. Yeah, when I calmed down, so I started, you know, when I calmed down, I started looking at things like that. Um, clearly, though, that that, I, that machine, the new Mac Pro, will be easier to work on than my my machine. It is accessible all the way because it's a pain in the ass Mac Pro to to, to get it in. Like I like I always said, I always I like the Power Mac G fours where the drawbridge came down. Everything was right there versus you know digging. Well, there. and that's what I like about the Z um, HP where you can just open the the screen and everything's right there. It, it's mm -hmm. and, and it's, it, here's the thing with the new way they're going with the Mac Pro or the trash can Mac because many people have pointed out there's a trash can in Japan that looks just like this thing, <laughs> even though it's even though it's being assembled in the U S. So clearly the trash can containers are being made in the U S. But anyway, well are being shipped here. Whatever. Well, no, it, okay. It, I get where they're going. They're, I, you're right. It's very much cube reminiscent days. But then there's the first and foremost. I care what something looks like, but secondary to functionality. And I started looking at this thing from a use point of view. And I'm like, the power button's in the wrong spot because in the way you would typically put this thing around, the power button's right. gonna be in the back, just like they made the mistake with the Mac Mini other things. The easiest place for the power button to be on this thing would have been either on the top or the other side. The top would have actually worked better because then you just pad the thing and it wouldn't have required any extra space you know, for like electronics. The reason why they didn't, I don't think people realize it. You, re you do realize you can just go from the top and spin it. It, it, it spins on its uh, Base. It just, it like, you, you can like turn it around if you wanted to. You, 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 you can, but the problem is you're going to wind up in the problem of needing the slack on the power cord. Well, see, how I'm going to do it, how I'm probably going to do it is, uh, well, let me be honest with you. I don't want to do it. Do you know how often I actually use the power button on my Mac Pro? Well, no, I, I know. It's like if you're, if, you're, if you're using that type of system, anything like I use this yeah. main desktop here, the only time I ever go looking for the power button yeah, yeah. is when the power gets knocked out. <laughs> yeah, my thing is, my machines stay on. Yeah. Well, no, no. And, and I, I, so I will give them a half pass for that. But again, this is one of those, it's going to be an annoyance those few times you have to mess you with it. You have to reach around that and see it. Yeah. Right? yeah. For me, I'm like, yes, but it's a, if, if I would turn it, it would probably be on the side then, since I'd have to like, probably reach like this and turn it on or something like that. Yeah, but, yeah, but then you need the extra slack on the power cord to, to do it that way, you know. Um, and and that goes with the thing. Now, that problem could have been fixed if they just put the power plug anywhere else. Because there's a, the way this thing's designed, it would actually be ideal for all those expansion um, Thunderbolt ports to be on the front facing you with the power port and everything else. So, but then the power yeah, cord needs to be really somewhere that's else. That's true. My microphone does have front facing power ports. Right. I do have uh, two firearms, two firearms, two USB. So. And what they switched uh, over to here is basically all Thunderbolt expansion. Which is fine, actually. Well, no, no, no. I don't have a problem with that. That's basically using Thunderbolt in place of PCI slots, which is it, which yeah. is what Thunderbolt was designed to be. Again, it's an aesthetics thing. Certain things should not be next to each other for the way you're going to want to use the machine and functionality. It's, I think they should have the power button. I think they're just like, well, just turn it around. But if you do have everything plugged in, turning it around as easy as it is, 
<laughs> it, it, like you need the slack on all those things, which is that much more. It, 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 it trust me, it's going to be annoying on some people. Um, I, I, I know that, but I, I will. For me personally, I don't really touch this power button all that often at all. Um, I the, the other thing, I get the Thunderbolt thing, and I, I agree it's probably a good idea going forward. Legacy-wise, though, they're well, not... Well, they have four USB ports. That's not bad. Uh, Let's see, I have one, two... I don't think they have any in the back. I think I have four USB total also. Well, no, and that, that's that, that's nothing less. I mean, that's pretty much what they've always had anyways. Yeah. Apple's never been big on putting the most USB ports you can. If you want, if you use USB ports like crazy, you I, want a custom build. Yeah. I'll, I know why it's like the Thunderbolt first there. Let me tell you. Right, they're your, they, those Thunderbolt ports are your PCI ports. That's exactly that's, what no, they're. Yeah, but this thing, the, 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 the big, the big, No, and that, and that was, you're, you're getting into the other thing I was going to get at here. Really what this thing almost needs is a sister attachment for true pro users where you can add the hard drives and the PCI cards back well, you, to it. Well, yeah, but see that's the thing. You're, you're not going to have internal drives anymore. You're going to have a desk essentially with external bays. Yes. Using, thunder, using the Thunderbolt ports. Essentially how it's going to be. That's how it's going to have to be. But, the footprint of the machine, even with all that, would still take up less space than my foot. Well, no, and that, that's what I mean. It, it's but. Now, here's the thing I'm going to get at here, though. Um, you're going to wind up with this spaghetti cord thing because of the way they designed it. What you really needed was uh, some of these ports, at least one of them, on the other side or on the side or something so you have these designed to be like the front ports they are and then the ones that are designed to be the replacement internal drives and the other things that go that way the other problem with that is as you're talking about there's going to be a cost curve for a little bit for people who really need those terabytes of storage well uh, initially what, what this Mac Pro is essentially doing it is going to force you to keep the OS and everything important on its PCIe SSD drive. And then you want to put everything else, which a professional does, I do it. You know, um, I don't keep much on my on the home drive. And uh, as a matter of fact, I'm, I still, I'm, I'm going to up the home drive to a Raptor uh, shortly. But the, they're doing exactly that. Everything stays on the SSD, uh, PCIe SSD. And, and you want to, you're going to do video editing. Everybody uses scratch disks. Everybody's going to use external stuff. You're not going to want to just buy that. I'm saying, if you want a lot initially to buy, in other words, if I don't know what iterations are going to offer, how many gigs of internal storage are going to offer you. If you want a lot of that, its price tag will go up exponentially because PCIe SSD is expensive. Yes. Uh, for, for storage. If you don't mind, and you don't want all that on your bed, which probably most pro users won't. Like I don't, I, I only have, what is it? I think I have only 250 gigs for my. I, I would product. say for the average person who's doing like you're doing, where like you say, everything's on the secondaries, um, yeah. 160 to 300 is sufficient, depending on their level. That's their cool things, yeah. their core tools, their software, their OS things, and then everything else, like you say. The, the workload is on its separate place. Correct, correct. What I like is it's going through Thunderbolt and the interface, depending on, even if theoretically, let's say you had, theoretically, if you had SSDs external, and you can do, you can, well, yeah, you would have to see you have SSD external. And, and, and uh, now I have you a, would, I have a, Thunderbolt speeds, which would then hit the, would hit the bus speeds at the PCI, the express speeds, 
versus which are which are faster for traditional um, hard drive bus speeds. In theory, so, you could beat serial ATA six. Uh, now, I, but I have a question on that. Do we know how these Thunderbolt ports are wired in? Are any of yeah, them shared, or are they all dedicated? They're the same thing as. Uh, so they're all dedicated. They 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 they're, they're using PCI, uh, PCI Express bus. So they're all dedicated, their own lines. They're not split or shared like we were afraid they'd wind up being at some point in other things. That's okay. So they at least. So your interface computer is in a, is a faster bus on a faster bus than traditional. Okay. But you're going to have, you know, six drives, I'd definitely, I'd definitely use uh, five of them. Oh well, so that, no, that, that's the thing. You're, you, and and it, it's actually this machine technically has less upgradability than the old Mac Pro design did because you're having to use the same ports for your drives and your cards and your other tools and stuff. Well, I mean, how is RAID handled through these things? Do you wind up having to get a because you had to get a separate RAID controller for the old Mac Pro. You'd use a, you'd use a NAS server, I'm sure, or, or uh, an external controller. It's one of those, uh, what is that company that had those box things? Um, my, my guess is what's going to wind up happening with this thing is there's going to be something that Apple historically hasn't supported, but they're going to have to back off and let the industry do it, which is a bunch of little third-party add-ons to make this thing behave like the user wants it to all through yeah. the Thunderbolt ports. And as long as Apple doesn't try and get in the way of that and control that... Well, I'm actually glad Thunderbolt is winning, hopefully. Um, it was because I kind of like it Thunderbolt as, as how the, the days of Firewire are losing out to USB even though Firewire should for one. Um, and, and the biggest thing I hope that this Mac Pro does bought sufficient quantity from Apple is start marginalizing the market for some of these very expensive technologies and make them cheaper. Um, going through Apple, that isn't going to happen. What what ultimately winds up, what what ultimately winds up doing that is when it winds up being more mainstream, and you have the non-Apple users buying it who care more about functionality than price tag. I'm not saying all Apple users, but you know what I mean. It's uh, Apple users tend to be more willing to overpay for something than an average user. It's, so as but as soon but that and we saw that with Firewire. The moment Firewire started showing up on PCs, all of a sudden Firewire was not oh dear god priced because they realized they couldn't get it anymore. They realized most of the market wanted it to be bang for buck, not oh it's Firewire, therefore I buy it. <gasps> right. Yeah, I mean this machine lets you do anything external from disk drives to uh, to SSD external to whatever interface you need, essentially. Uh, um, it's like I say, computing to me is more of this, like we're talking about the software. As long as the, the software does uh, empower what we need, the form factor to me can be irrelevant. Remember how I was discussing it could be a, I, a I, business card or whatever? Yes, but, I, I, I know, but I am going to tell you right now, I know some video. I don't need to have a box with, a, with all my internal hard drives. But don't cut off the ability. And that's why I look at this. I'm like, well, I'm just going to use the Thunderbolt ports. That means I'll have some wires to external base. That's not a, really a big deal to me. Because it's still a much smaller area than my Mac Pro is taking up, even if I did that. Well, um, no, and, and, I, and, I, and I agree with you, and I think all your points are valid. Uh, it, my, my first impression of this thing is for some users, Minus the obvious design flaws I, I pointed out about some things just shouldn't be next to each other. It's a good, they, they, they've done a good job. It is the Cube 2.0. It, and it's, as some reviewers have said, technology finally caught up to the concept. Okay. On a different note, though, I have to look at this thing as Apple's first mid tower. Because there's a certain class of Mac Pro user who were in that always-on environment who care just as much about hardware. And they're going to look at this thing and go, I can't get there from here until the industry catches up. I don't know. I mean, my, my thing is, our, um, our first, we, we got to see what the price tag it is. If there is some, 
and I, I won't put it past the cook. He is a master of logistics and pulling shit off. So my my guess is a machine with sufficient uh, internal SSD. My uh, my, my honest my honest guess is you're looking at, at we don't know like you said yet, but if I had to guess. Uh, I'd say this thing is going to be priced comparable to the current Mac Pro with a starter yeah. drive of 128 or something with the ability to upgrade to a 512, maybe even a terabyte at extreme cost. And that's going to be the range of internal storage. You can no longer get a Mac with like um, 8 terabytes of internal storage, but it will be priced comparably to what the current Mac is, taking yeah. that exception and specs into line yeah. because it is a smaller yeah. package and other things. So I think you're probably looking at a uh, $1,800 to $5,000 machine depending on how specced out you get it. <laughs> it's going to be fast as hell. I'm going to tell you the um, PCI SSD is, is no joke. You bypass traditional bottlenecks. Uh, it, and it's not to say that the Mac only does There's plenty of, on the, on the uh, PC Windows side that does that for people who can do that. PCIe SSD cards have been out there for a while, um, and that you know with the motherboards that support it. Uh, but it, there's even nice. some high end. You're going into some serious, you're going into some serious, but um, uh, much better interface speeds um, with this with this machine. Uh, the video cards are also people are worried about that. They're not soldered. They're not soldered to the motherboard. They're, they are daughter cards, and I have a good word that they're already just third parties working on form factor slots to, if you want to upgrade the... Uh, I the still think that's stuff. going to wind up being an extra Mac tax for users because it's yet another... because it, it's it's a smaller market, a smaller thing. It's it, it, it's oh, not being... Yeah, you'll, you'll, pay, you'll pay a premium, you'll pay a premium for, you know, for that uh, to get... Yeah, I'm sure you would. The, the video cards themselves. Yeah. Because they're going to be the upgrade because they're going to be niche to, to, to the Mac Pro. Definitely. Uh, um, I, I, I guess. Um, I, I'm undecided. I can't decide if this is a mistake or a good step forward for Apple. It's, it's different in what a, I, a difference what I good for Apple. Yeah. And it's 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 uh, but it's not that different from where enterprise does what enterprise does with things, and uh, that's the thing is well, it's but not, it's not as big of a shot from that. That's where I'm really confused because I like I said I get where they're going, but Apple has spent the last two years pissing off enterprise and pro users. I know, but hey. <laughs> so that's what I mean. Is this still a user base in the <laughs> Apple world? <laughs> Dude, and I'll tell you, they said our pro users, I think, three times in this keynote. <laughs> that was, I'm, like, I, I'm like, do you have any left? You know? <laughs> there are. There are. What I, I guess what I'm liking about it is we, we definitely have a what's happening is traditional hard drive bus feeds are going away. It's already happening in enterprise. We're, it's, it, we can do far better. Everything is, everything is channeling in technology to crudely say to where the entire video technologies have, you know, derived their power from. They, they, they always needed faster bus speeds, private memories, you know, faster, faster uh, memories to their own, to their own clock rates and GPUs and things like that. And um, uh, OpenCL and, and all of the other languages using to borrow power from video cards is happening much more and more, which is, is, is giving us this massive parallelism. However, the software is such a drag on that. It's like a gigantic mountain with a lasso around it that this hardware has to pull uh, because the software traditionally really has to uh, be coded for it to, to give you that, that full benefit. But hey, internally, what you know, we're going these directions. We're getting now dynamic memory is is kind of stalled a little bit for the price. You know, we're, it's we're predominantly enterprise either uses ECC and a lot of a lot of that's even though DDR3 is 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 the is the deal. Um, you'll start seeing faster memory coming, uh, and I'm, I'm kind of kind of watching how that works. 
but there's nothing to stop bringing even dynamic RAM, uh, even, on, even on a faster. I, 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 ironically, one of the main things standing in the way of it right now is the fact that Intel's kind of put bottlenecks in the way they've been doing their CPUs and other things for a little bit, which has in some ways taken us backwards from where we were a little bit ago. So we'll, we'll see what happens there. And I, I, I'm honestly wondering if we're not going to wind up just switching the architecture in general to get around certain companies not moving at the space they should. You think we can really do that? You think that would stick? But that, you know, I don't know, things move slowly. Even just, just businesses in general, but business in general moves very slow. Because the users bitch. My mom being one of them. <laughs> you know, they don't want to change what they have. Um, but enterprise it's, itself on the top end in the server rooms where you see the, the uh, culminations of these things uh, because it saves the money. Well, no, that's the thing. Where the big pushes, in, uh, particularly in hardware and software, goes for, like you're saying, higher end enterprise custom boxes where the name of the game is do more with less, and the person operating it is a sophisticated user or administrator who, no matter how complex well, you make it. I guess it would be the same consumer. Yeah. Why would, a, why would a, somebody wants to do iMovie buy this game? Say what? Why would a person who's going to be in iMovie, you know, doing stuff in iMovie, want to buy this? Because they're a Mac head and they have to buy the Mac Shiny. Well, hey, if they're uh, using that format, they're 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 hard drive every freaking iteration of an operating system, and they want to buy it, then it can feel free to go spend the money on. It. Go ahead. Now, I mean, uh, let's be honest. Let, let, let's be honest. I, I would bet half the people who buy Mac Pros don't actually need a system in that league. They bought it because Apple convinced them they needed the shiny. Well, it, so I'm going to guarantee a lot of people are going to buy it because it looks cool. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. And then they're going to get it and go, shit, what do I do? <laughs> <laughs> because they're they're mentally they're not going to be mentally there to uh, now it may be a learning experience for them though oh okay I'm going to have to do external this and that and whatever and that's that's what they get for jumping on board but I hope they know what they're getting into you know because it truly is this 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 I agree with uh, uh, what the hell who, who did the keynote for the mentor uh, it wasn't Cook. Why am I getting a blank? I can't remember the guy's name. I can't remember the name either. It's a slash of me. Whatever. Uh, this is where the desktop is going. It is. I mean, uh, I don't care. Form factors, you know. It's, form factors have never been a problem. Uh, as long as you didn't stop what I did, the function to do. Uh, and I think it's, it's pretty neat. We're getting small form factors. It's going to be fast as hell. Uh, what this thing? If, if people are going to talk to PC fans and say custom build, just picking custom build. Yeah, you can custom build. Well, no. What what this thing is is a um, a desktop PC that's been modularized, and and that this is your this is it, it's a desktop PC that's been modularized with some uh, prosumer parts. And that this is your main hub module that you hook oh, things off of. It, 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 it was not a quote. It was a mint to your machine. It was not the. Uh, yeah. Kind of, this uh, is closer. So they, they made this thing freaking. This is closer to that incarnation. I, I wouldn't say it's 100% there. I'd say it's I have a lot closer. Principally, on principle, it blows away from the Primax series. Because Power Macs were notorious for having a peripheral end, like the end of the I.O. was terribly fast. Getting back and forth, like uh, on the motherboard was the bottom. The bus seats were always shit. This thing? No. That's, that's, that's like a freaking tall one with 15 rings, man. That's an easy tag all the way through. Uh, as long as the secondary stuff's built that way too, yes. <laughs> no, I mean, it's Thunderbolt, Thunderbolt, it's not going to. 
And you, hey, if you plug in uh, an external hard drive, uh, you know, SATA, whatever, 1700 RPM. Honestly, I can see one of the first um, accessories for this thing being a, um, a RAID thing that holds four or five drives that plugs into one Thunderbolt port. Yeah, well, you know, they're, 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 yeah, they, they already have that stuff. I did that already. So. Yeah. Uh, so you, the reality is you wouldn't need to use the five unless you want five separate drives. Right, which is I like to do. I, I, I don't typically use RAID because my backup systems are, are different. And I, I, I do mirror imaging rather quickly. Because um, I, I don't have to have uptime uh, like a server would need to host it, you know, to freaking thousands of end users uh, that it would need to have a fallback. You know, for me, okay, I'm down for as long as it takes me to restore the image. Like, oh, well, I'm going to go play with the kids instead of work to, this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't really, you know, I don't really, I, I just don't really use Ray for, for what I do. Uh, my, my backup methods and online methods are just different. Uh, not as, ex as expensive, I guess you could say. And it's worked for me for years, I've never gone a Ray, a Ray rap, other than when I was gaming and when I did Ray Zero. What? Well, I, I, I'm doing a show. It's <laughs> hmm? a lot. So, um, we'll see. I just want to see what the hell the things are going to cost. I, 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 you know what? It's, I hope I'm right about the price because old school Apple. And I don't think Apple is this company anymore. Would have been to do what they did with the Mac Air, which is make the first run of these cost like eight thousand dollars to pay for the second run of them. And I don't think Apple is a company that can do that anymore. And I think the people in charge of it right now know Apple is a company that can't do that anymore. So that's why I said what I said. If they wind up being that stupid, though, uh, just <laughs> yeah. Now the dynamic RAM four banks. The, the dents of your memory, typically the, the dims are more expensive. Uh, I, I have to, you know what, off the top of my head, I'm going to have to look at the topology to the chip on... Um, I know the memory is going to be more the, expensive the, the, the than this banks, thing. Yeah, on, on the throughput. What was it they said? Oh yeah, 256-bit wide on the chip. The other thing is... That, 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 that's, let me tell you something. That's a selfish... You're on a 50-lane highway consolidating to uh, 25 toll booths. So you can maybe handle it, but your crunching power is not going to be 2 to 6 bit length. Well, That's yeah, it's, it's, it's not a two, it's not a two fifty six bit system. Of course, your crunching power is not going to be two fifty six. Yeah. <laughs> so I know that chip. The, the chip I think even except for like one twenty eight. So anyway. Well, I mean, nice. some <laughs> first I put a break mark in. <laughs>